See Adam, I just I'm just looking at the ones that I want, and the last bunch have been terrific. Adam Adovino joins us from City Field now. Adam, it's Brian Kenny. How are you? Uh, I'm doing well, BK. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to have you back on the show here again. Again, we, we have you on here a number of times. You, you you look at the game in a very cerebral fashion, but tell me emotionally. Again, you played for the Yankees. You're from New York City. Now you're playing in Queens. What is that like for you, family, everything else? Uh, it's awesome. Uh, this is uh, kind of what we wanted to happen this off season. Uh, you know, play at home again, and uh, it's just way better for me. I get to see my kids more often and uh, kind of have some sense of normalcy and also um, the team's I knew the team was going to be good, so I'm glad I landed here. So you've never had to move, or have you moved between? Because you did go to Boston in between, or do you always have a place in, in, in Brooklyn or Manhattan? No, we never moved. I mean, home base is here. Uh, we live up in Westchester, but uh, last year the girls would drive up and see me like every chance they could, about three and a half hours up to Boston, but this is a little easier. <laughs> yeah. um, you guys, uh, 40 and 22, got off to a great start. Most people thought you'd be good. We didn't know how good. What did you think about the start? Yeah, um, you know, you never expect to win. I don't know what we won, like 11 or 12 of the first 13 series or something like that. You never expect to be that good. Um, but I knew that we had a good team. We have a very veteran team, a lot of guys who have been through it. Um, and we've been consistent. I mean, I think that's been the hallmark of our team. We haven't, haven't gotten too low, uh, you know, yet. So we're just trying to keep driving forward, and I'm proud of the way we've played so far. Give me something that's slightly different about playing for Buck Showalter. Slightly different. Um, I don't know, just his personality, you know. Uh, every time you have an interaction with Buck, you know, it's going to be informative but also funny at the same time. So uh, he has a good way of good rapport with all the guys. Uh, me being an older guy, uh, you know, he has certain things that he reserves just for me because he knows that I can appreciate him and maybe some of the younger guys, it's uh, <laughs> before their time. Uh, but so I just like being around him. He's got a great vibe. So you ha you'll get some of his references then, you're saying, and some of the younger guys have no idea. All right. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, how much communication do you have with your manager? Or is it, by the time it gets to you, is it pitching coach, pitcher liaison? How does that work? No, I mean, I probably chat with Buck every day a little bit. You know, uh, he's got obviously a lot of balls in the air, but he finds a way to come by and drop a line or two on me every day. So uh, quite a bit of communication. Do you talk to him or does he talk to you about coming in in clean innings or coming on with runners on base? Because uh, it's vastly different uh, for most pitchers. Do you have input on that or do you give input on that? Yeah, I mean, like when I first uh, came down to spring, we chatted for about half an hour just on, you know, my, what I'm comfortable with, not comfortable with. I think he does that with everybody. And then we had another chat after a couple weeks of the season, kind of once he kind of got the lay of the land and could get his eyes on everybody in real time. So, uh, you know, I just kind of informed him that I'm, I'm comfortable with pretty much anything. So if anybody else needs to adjustment, you can uh, always make me a little uncomfortable. That's no big deal. Right. So, yeah, uh, does he tell you? He's like, hey, I want to bring you in high – because I've seen you in high leverage, and then recently I've seen you clean innings. Is there any emphasis either way, and what works for you? I mean, I think it's a combination of – He's not trying to overwork any one guy, so we kind of been rotating through a lot in the different spots. Uh, myself, uh, Drew Smith, Seth Lugo, guys like that. Um, but also, I think it's matchups too. You know, some of the times he brings me and guys on base, obviously it's a tough righty, and uh, typically that's the window he would want me in there. Do you ever look at uh, opponents' exit velocity and how you're doing on that? Yeah, I mean, I know I'm the best right now, so <laughs> there you uh, go. <laughs> I'm happy with that. I saw the little uh, 100 pop up on the Baseball Savant site. I've only seen 99s before, so I saw 100. I said, ooh, i got to try to maintain this. 99s are good, too, if you're the 99th percentile. Take a look. We have, by the way, StackCast is powered by Google Cloud, and he is the best, number one in opponent's exit velocity. Adam Adovino is number one, then Tyler Rogers uh, after that, but at, uh, let me see, at 81.6. So why do you think you would be, besides, you know, look, your certain level of excellence, why do you think your pitchers are conducive to that level of weak contact? Well, I mean, it's been going on for a while, like ever since I saw the metric kind of trying to figure out where you fit in. Uh, I feel like my slider in particular gets pretty weak exit velocity uh, on average, and that's the pitch I feature the most. So something about the horizontal movement, I think getting off the barrel uh, kind of is the way that you achieve the low exit velo. 
Uh, but it's not the be-all and end-all. It's just kind of a cool stat. And anything I'm the best at or, or currently the best at, I, I'm going to try to uh, enjoy that. Oh, yeah, print those out, you know, like find them, print them, you know, put them <laughs> up, frame them. Um, psychologically, you know, like Edwin Diaz now looks, you know, sensational. He even had, like, I think a five-out save the other day. Um, you've got blown up, I think, once or twice this year. Then you're on a great run. Um, what, how, what does confidence play into it, and how do you try to work that? I just stay with the process. Um, in two of the, you know, I had two really bad games this year, and only in one of them did I think I pitched badly. Uh, and the one against the Braves, I thought it was more of a function of the other team had really good at bats against me and got some bad ball luck in the inning. Um, so overall, I just try to control the process. I know that it's not always going to line up with the results, but uh, even early on when my numbers were not great, I was I was happy with the way I was throwing the ball, and I knew I didn't need to make too many adjustments. I just wanted to stay there and stay consistent. I know it sounds simple, but like there is some. You're not quite a field goal kicker, but it's almost like the game is going a certain way. You, you know, if you do your job, that's good. If you're not good, you lose it right then and there. How how do you deal with that pressure and then dealing with your teammates after? It's just experience. I mean, it hurts a lot when you're younger. Uh, when you come to the realization that you're you're in the role that if you give up a run, you might cost the team the game. So. Um, every time that I do give up a run or a couple runs, it's definitely hurting our chances to win. Um, and, you know, that's just part of the gig. you got to talk to the reporters and kind of own up to it and just kind of turn the page and understand that that's just your job. Other guys maybe pitch in situations where they can give up a run or two and it's not going to hurt the team, but not, not, not late inning relievers. And then when it's going well, I guess, does it feel different than, like, say, when you're on a run where, like, you're, you're locking down an inning? Is that confidence built on itself? Do your teammates feel that too? I think so. I mean, you know, uh, bullpen guys, they know this. Like, you're trying to get on a couple really good runs each year and uh, just try to get on some good streaks, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten games in a row, something like that. And you know you're doing your job. And then uh, you know another – patch of adversity is coming but uh, if you can cut it off at the head right after the bad game and get on another good run uh, that's going to serve you well all right again on a good run right now again uh, last 12 and two thirds 13 strikeouts a sub one era brewers and mets tonight first of a three game series and again adam Adovino, uh, always a pleasure to have on the show adam thank you so much we'll do it again good luck